Hello, my name is Pam Horner. I live on the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Gibsons, British Columbia. I'm a potter. This is my studio and so welcome to Pottery by Pam. I'm a hand builder. I build everything from this slab roller from a slab of clay that looks like this. So I thought I'd take a few minutes to show you how I make a piece. When I roll it out, I can roll it out the clay out any thickness I want but I usually roll it to about a quarter of an inch or seven uh, millimeters because the clay shrinks as it dries. And so I allow for that so it becomes the thickness that I want it to be. So let's get started. The first thing I do is I make a template. This way, if I make multiples of the same thing, then I know that they're all gonna be the same size. Now I like to have some texture. So we're gonna put some texture on this bud base. Use cornstarch to keep the texture from sticking and becoming distorted. I jokingly say I use more cornstarch in my studio than I do in my kitchen. Okay, this is a hand roller and I'm gonna use it to put the pattern on the bud base. Now what ends up happening is it becomes a little distorted because of the pressure of my hand. So I go back, measure to make sure that it's still the same size as I started. And this side is a little off kilter, so we'll trim that back again to what it was. Now when I join this, I want to make sure that the seam is not too thick. So I'm cutting, I'm cutting that on a little bit of an angle. Where your pieces are gonna join, you need to make sure that they will join with each other. So I do this, just scratch that, and then I'm gonna wet it. Some people, some potters, make a slurry that they put on it, but I find that by doing what I did with the serrated edge and then putting water on it, it just makes its own slurry. Now we're going to join the two sides. Now I'm joining on the inside, just with my hand, I'm pushing. Look down and see if it's reasonably round, which would be, is always a good thing. And we need to put a bottom on it. I use these little cookie cutters, biscuit cutters. I wanna so now I'm gonna go cut a piece out of the clay. Now it's important that you try and get that flat before you attach it. We'll do the same thing here because we're gonna join the bottom. I usually go in two directions. And then the other direction. And we need to make the slurry on each of these. So now I'm trying to make the bottom of the piece fit into the bottom that I've cut. Okay, now we're gonna make sure that they're sticking to each other. This pony roller, or actually this is not, this is a brayer that people use in printing. And so that will give it some lift. I find that one of the things that helps is if I put it on my knee. 
and then that makes a slight indentation. Now we need to make the top. So I'm gonna squeeze, I'm squeezing this in. Again, reinforcing that inside. So now we need to bring the lip out. Again, the clay is malleable at this time, at this point. If, if it's too dry, it would start to break. If it's too wet, it's going to collapse. So now I'm actually wetting it more because I want this to really go out a little bit. It's not quite thin enough on the end for me. So I'm heavily watering my fingers to make it thin on the edge. Now I want it ruffled. One of the things about hand building is that you definitely use your hands, whereas people who work on the wheel form all this on the wheel, but I like being able to shape it. And I can give it uniqueness. And the last thing I do is I give it buttons. So this is the finished one. These are some of the pieces I have made. I like to make pottery that is unique, that is fun, and is functional. This is a berry bowl, and the bottom drain is attached. So you don't have to worry about, when you wash it, having the water run all over the countertop. This piece, the marks, are made by various tools that I use in contrast, but I also have contrasted the um, outer color with the inner color. This piece, the glaze naturally separates into different colors. So in this you'll see a sort of a teal and a blue and a green. And those marks are made with yet another piece of another uh, tool that I pilfered from my sewing basket. This was just a funky piece that I thought about and decided to make. The hand is actually made from the insert of a pair of gloves. One of the unique things about this vase is that the marks on it are made from ground coffee. Now, coffee has not been perked but you'll see that there are all sorts of sizes of the piece of the grounds of coffee. This box is reflective of the beautiful area where we live. The mountains, when it's, they're snow topped, the water, the seagulls, the driftwood on top is local driftwood. And you can store anything you'd like inside. I hope you'll stop by my place during the art call on venue number 14. We will be observing all health protocols and we ask that you wear a mask. Welcome to my kiln shack. This is where I do my firing.
pieces you see on the wall are samples of all the colors that are available. You can combine any colors with any other colors because they're all compatible. And everything I make is food safe, microwave safe, and dishwasher safe. This is my kiln. It's an electric kiln and it's run by a computer. So I don't have to be out here. It automatically increases the temperature and decreases the temperature whenever it needs to. Thank you for stopping by.